real time web what is this thing um, it's magic it's the awesomeness from the future so if you look at the history of the web the web started as a place where you could share documents you could just keep static documents there was nothing dynamic about it html files came in markup came in it became a little jazzy but still not cool enough people wanted more dynamic dynamic dynamicism in the pages so server side dynamic stuff came along cgi perl asp php but wasn't good enough you needed something on the browser also that's when javascript came along there was a browser war uh, internet explorer came along and the pains to all our lives came along <laughs> but that was what that also wasn't good enough we needed to change the page content without refreshing the page <laughs> this portions of it that's when xhr came along some people thought it was the end of it we had dynamic stuff at the server side dynamic stuff at the client side but they were wrong that's not the end of it and that's when the web sockets come along <coughs> web sockets is the future after all this it's the next big thing for the web what is this what is this web socket thing so the web sockets are bidirectional and full duplex communication channels for your clients on the browser um how many of you use gmail how many of you chat on gmail okay so when you chat you type in a message and the other person immediately gets it and when they chat you get it and if both of you are chatting at the same typing at the same time you still see it right the person is typing it's full duplex it's bidirectional it's a communication channel it's in use you use it every day as a user it's about that you start using as a programmer <coughs> can you use some multiplayer games you can have um a really really large games with thousands of players and you can have uh, users pinging each other sending locations chatting with each other sending scores fighting blah blah all kinds of stuff so it's really good for communication for multiplayer games it's good for live and instant updates uh, how many of you use twitter how many of you have a mail id on any mail provider which is modern enough <laughs> You see in old days you had to refresh a page to see if your mail you had new mails now you don't have to do that it pops and immediately after you get a mail you, you get a notification saying that you have a certain mail the server pushes information to you beat your mobile phone beat your browser beat your tablet the server is pushing push information to you this is what's used today web sockets pushing instant information to the client and they are available on the most modern browsers So you're almost ready to go. If you have an application that has good amount of traffic, you want to add any of the cool features mentioned here, which is mostly updates, uh, you can start using web sockets, and they're pretty awesome. So what does the code look like? Don't get into the detail. Uh, so you create a new instance of the web socket. You say where to connect. And then you say when the connection opens, do something. When the connection closes, do something. And when you receive a message, do something. that's pretty much the whole interface defined for web sockets don't get into the detail this doesn't matter fine if there's also why and all of us already using them well first of all browser support the firefox latest supports them chrome supports chrome supports them safari supports them ie10 supports them opera supports them but we have a lot of people who are on really really terrible browsers and that doesn't only include the older browsers that includes Uh, how many of your android phone users here congratulations you are using the ie of the mobile <laughs> it's one of the worst mobile browsers today it doesn't have web socket support it doesn't have a lot of things um, so what do we do about this the second problem is it's a pretty new technology and there were a lot of flaws and a lot of security issues in it so there were multiple drafts um, everybody was creating their own drafts w3c had multiple drafts what wg had the different drafts and there are slight differences in the communication protocol so if one browser implemented somehow and you implemented in the server side how to communicate the other browser will not work that's pretty shitty right i mean you write for one browser and the other browser doesn't work and that's just one version of browser chrome 14 works chrome 17 doesn't work so it's painful <coughs> when up prefixes mozilla said no matter how good this technology gets we are going to stick with dash mos in front of it it cannot be new web socket it has to be new dash mos web socket There's only one. 
And of course, earlier drafts had security loopholes, so you cannot use earlier drafts. Well, they'll be ready in a year or two, but you're right here, you're talking about it right now. Why not use it right now? Let's see, we'll go ahead and figure out ways of using it right now. Uh, is it readable? I'll leave it. Why even talk about something that's unusable today? Okay? Does it make sense? <coughs> Using something that's unusable today? We are not hackers here. We use unusable stuff, make it usable. <laughs> so there are a lot of tested alternate pro alternates available. So WebSockets is pretty new. It's like uh, the draft is two years old. The implementations are about six months old. Uh, but people have been doing these things for more than two years. There have been chat clients on the internet for almost a decade now. How many have used uh, Mebo? <coughs> And it pretty works, pretty much works, right? How does it work? WebSockets is a new thing. How did it work in the olden days? Well, you didn't have a full duplex bidirectional communication channels before. You had full duplex unidirectional channels before. And they were hacks. WebSockets came in to replace those hacks. These are the lists of hacks available. So there is something called Comet, there's a Bayux protocol, there's a Bosch protocol, there's a Jax push engine. You can use any of these ex existing solutions to implement real-time communication in your web pages. These are older hacks that <coughs> ran even on IE4. So they're quite tested. They're well-proven, well-tested solutions. WebSocket just tries to remove the, all these hacks and put something very standard so that everybody implements it so that our lives become easier. A lot of people, I'm, uh, how many people are from Direct Eye here? A few? Okay. You guys already use Bosch protocol, I think, quite a lot. And these solutions use fallbacks like um, XHR, like Ajax, what, what everyone uses already, iframes, which existed before XHR happened. And if you don't want to use either of them, you can have a Flash object which implements WebSockets for you. So that's one of the cool things about Flash. No matter how much we bitch about Flash sucks, Flash is awful, Flash lets you do what today web standards are not capable of doing. HTML5 is only so good today. It might become really awesome tomorrow, but today we need that flash fallbacks. And we've been using these, these tools for ages now. Okay, if you use, look at any finance websites, well, not the Indian ones, um, any of the American uh, finance websites, they use these, in, uh, these tools to push stock updates. <laughs> you don't have to refresh a page to see one stock update. As stocks update, partial pages update automatically. Gmail sends you messages, Twitter sends you updates. People have been using for ages. Well, we have been just fine. There hasn't been any pain. These things have been for so long. Why even use WebSockets, right? Why do we need WebSockets? Well, these solutions are good, but they're hacks. There are a lot of problems with it. If you use a flash fallback, it comes with a huge chunk of RSW file. You don't want to increase, increase the payload. Um, if you're using any of the other solutions, it's unidirectional. It's not bidirectional. And of course, they have their own benefits and their issues. WebSockets tries to standardize all of them together into one single standard, make them process, implement them, so that our lives become easier again. Uh, some of them are not scalable. If you're using Comet or you're using Bayex protocol, the implementation is available. Uh, they don't use uh, evented servers. Um, how many of you know how, near, here know about Node.js, Nginx, and you've seen the history of how Apache couldn't scale beyond a certain point because it was multi-processed, then certain servers couldn't scale because they were multi-threaded, and then suddenly these servers came along, Node.js, Nginx, and Cherokee and all, and blah. We have infinitely scaling machines. That's because for high throughput, you need evented servers. None of these implementations use evented servers. You can have a chat server which can serve 100 people, maybe 200, maybe 500, not 10,000, not 100,000. So you needed something that could handle so many uh, so many connections. So now, neither of these solutions are scalable. So do you mean to say that evented servers are the only way to get high throughput? Not really. That's, that's quite debatable, but they are one of the good ways of getting high throughput compared to the other classical solutions available. Okay, so we have been, I mean, 
How many of you used rounded corners 10 years back, 5 years back, 3 years back? Remember if you used to put B tags or so there were some roundizer plugins and all? There were a lot of hacks to do rounded corners even 10 years ago. But now you have a border radius property in CSS. It's not about, the standards are not about creating new solutions. It's about taking existing solutions and putting them in one place in a very standard way so that you can save your time. You don't have to go around re-implementing the hacks. WebSockets is exactly that. Putting all these hacks together in one place so that you can save your time and do something much, much better, much more awesome. Well, of course, it saves money also. We are all believe it. But it will take forever to standardize. W3C is an awesome body. It takes years to standardize anything. So what do we do? Well, what we can do is, we can write a wrapper that connects to WebSockets if available. If not, then probably connects to a Flash-based WebSockets if available. If not, then we connect to iFrame-based solution. If not, we can connect to XHR polling. Many, many solutions available. You need a system that can take care of all this together in one place. You need a wrapper API that takes care of all this. Okay. It should be simple to use. I mean, of course, I mean, if you want to use complex API, that's your choice. It uses WebSockets available. That's the biggest point. If WebSockets is available, use it. None of the existing solutions like Bosch or Waves use WebSockets. And fall back to the next best transport <coughs> available. If not available, then the next best. And most importantly, scales well on the server side. We're talking about end-to-end -end solutions, server side and client side. That's where socket.io comes along. So socket.io is this wrapper over node, uh, wrapper over web sockets, which uses, uses all the other fallbacks that are available, uh, and it integrates very well with Node.js. If you any of you are Erlang users or Scalar users, there are socket.js bindings available in those languages. Socket.io is a server side as well as a client side library. It's exactly what we need. It works on i5.5. I don't know if any of you have user sign 5.5, but it still works. Okay. Um, it has a simple API, and most important, it's consistent across server and client. If you're writing code on the server and the client in JS, it looks exactly the same on both the sides. So it's very, very, very clear to understand what the code is trying to do. If you're a front-end guy and you have to jump into back-end and it's written and twisted with Python, you might have problems if you don't know Python. Here, it's exactly the same API on both the sides. So for you, it's, there is no server side, there is no client side, it's all one huge chunk of JavaScript. So it's pretty easy to implement, pretty easy to maintain if you're a JavaScript person. And because it, it uses evented servers, it scales really, really well. I mean, really, really well. I have tested it for more than 100,000 connections on my laptop. Of course, that's an um, artificial benchmark, but it works. And it has a lot of plugins, it is free and it's open source, you find a bug, you commit it, you see something missing, you create a plugin, you submit a patch, it's all open source and free to use. The server side code, should I zoom in? The code is not as important I guess. So the the code simply says you require the socket.io library and you say this into a certain port and then you say on connection, you get a socket instance. So whenever a client connects to the server, the client, the server gets instance of that client, a kind of a handle on which you, the server can operate. Okay, And then you can send messages, you can receive messages, so it's, the, the handle that you get is the bi-directional channel. Okay? You can say emit an event or you can say on event do something. It's just like how you write jQuery code or JavaScript code. Pretty similar. Very similar side and very, very similar on the client side also. Okay. I don't think there is Wi Fi here. What I can do is I have implemented a quick demo which is the slides itself. So, as the the slideshow person, I can navigate any person who has the same post open anywhere else the slide with me. So I everything is synchronized everywhere. Um, if there was internet, I would demo it, but I don't want to. Just open a new window and yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Mm. 
implemented a small security thing so make sure that nobody else can slide my slides. I mean I don't want everybody to be sliding everybody else's slides. So the page has Konami code. Up up down down left right left right okay. and if I slide now so if you had the page open you would see this with me. If you're not even in this room and watching a part a video cast you could see the slides. Isn't that cool? So this, the idea is, I implemented, a, so the slides was already there. I just implemented a small code that takes care of all the communication. And I mean, you wouldn't think of a slides doing any kind of communication, but the truth is, every web application out there can have some kind of a communication. Okay. And you can use WebSockets to implement that. So let's say if you have, um, how many of you have any kind of SMS based, um, SMS based application out there? Okay. Now after the SMS regulation, you can't really push messages. What you can do is implement, <coughs> implement a client uh, app that probably connects to your WebSocket server and instead of sending SMSs to the user, you can use WebSockets to push real time messages. Or you can implement chess, or you can implement checkers, or you can implement any, any multiplayer game. So essentially WebSockets is all about bidirectional communication and full duplex. I repeat again, should I? No, okay. Uh, that's it. QA, <coughs> would it be possible to differentiate a pattern between socket at IOR and so this question is uh, why can't we use pusher app instead of using socket.io, right? So the pusher app itself uses web sockets and it uses all these fallbacks also. Socket.io is just another library that lets you host your own server. Pusher app runs their own server. Instead of using your own server, you can use let's say if you wanted to implement only the client side. You can use, and only server side you needed was the, the communication part. You can use Pusher. Uh, how heavy is it on the wire? As in, if it's a WebSocket talking, will the data transferred? I mean, is it compressed? What is it? So, um, before WebSockets, you use XHR and all. And in, in that case, you had to request every time. And when you request, you send out headers, you send out cookies. In WebSockets, you don't send out anything. You have a persistent connection, and all you send is just a message. That's it. Plus, of course, four bytes in the initial part for the signature. So it's good for inter services communication or something yeah, like it's, that. It's, it's, it's not so just a client. So, socket.io is about having a client and a server side solution. WebSockets itself is about also client. You can have a desktop client talking to your server. You don't need a web browser. You can just yeah. have you can have a GGS bindings for uh, GNOME shell. Uh, for WebSockets, and you can have a GNOME shell extension that probably listens to some WebSocket service and shows you notification. That's possible. It actually WebSockets violates HTTP 1.1. Write about cross-domain communication. There are no cross-domain policies on uh, WebSockets. So you can communicate cross-domain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, using a proxy, yeah. I mean, your server can act as a proxy. Of course, you can't communicate between two machines that are behind NAT. I mean, I'm some guy sitting in one college, another in another college. They can't directly communicate. They have to go through a NAT. When they go through a NAT, they need a physical machine to merge the traffic. That's your server. And it's uh, if you use Node.js based solution, I mean, it scales quite well. Unless you're targeting millions of users, in that case, you need multiple servers. <laughs> Apart from the bad privacy that we spoke about, can a browser host a socket? No. A browser is only a WebSocket client. You can connect to a WebSocket and then <coughs> do things on messages. That's it. You can send messages, you can receive messages. 
Uh, you said like uh, the whole wrapper library falls back from WebSocket to SWF to three other methods, right? But the last, the bottom of those methods are only unidirectional. Yeah. Whereas the top most are bidirectional. So how is this wrapper, you know, going to like? So, suppose I'm an I and I don't have SWF either, you know. So uh, how does the bidirectional communication so work? When you say bidirectional, what you do is uh, you open a connection, and let's say it's a WebSocket, and person sends message, he receives message. Now this WebSocket is not available. So what you do is you open iframe in which the person keeps listening unless, unless, until there's a message. So there's a server to client unidirectional message available. For a client to server, you can do a, oh, yeah. a, no, no, a normal HTTP request. Okay. So it's, it can be bidirectional <coughs> using a normal HTTP request and these fallbacks together. But that will also support cross domain? That won't support cross domain. Okay. One more consideration that you write it. Since it runs on port 80, I mean, unless your firewall is blocking a particular site on port 80, it will work. So everything gets tunneled through port 80. Yeah, so it, it's a HTTP handshake, and after that, it, it's a TCP channel on HTTP. So that channel remains open, and you can communicate on that TCP channel. So it's not like a traditional socket server. It's not a it's not a TCP socket by say. It, it's it's a HTTP socket that remains open, and then you can come in, keep con communicating over it. So what are the security threats that you talked about that security is the problem, what's the problem with the web sockets earlier? I don't clearly remember the security loophole that was in the earlier graph. Okay. So what I will say is suppose you open a channel and on the server I can close the channel. So do, can you post from client to close the channel via yes. browser? Yes, yes can. can you repeat that? Huh? Can you repeat yeah. the question? So his question is uh, can you close a uh, channel from the client side? Yes you can. The both parties are capable of closing the channel. It's yet another TCP channel. Both the parties are capable of closing the channel. So that way, whenever you navigate out, the browser will automatically close it. Yeah. Whenever you navigate out, you refresh the page, you do anything that changes the page. It reloads, it closes the connection. Was it possible to close the connection real time also? You can close it yourself also. You can call the close method on the web socket. Well, uh, his question is, does it support SSL? Yes, it does. So, uh, when you connect to a WebSocket, the WebSocket uh, protocol starts with WS colon slash slash. If you want to use a WebSocket secure, it's WSS colon slash slash. It runs over HTTPS. Does all your channel drain the No. Polling does. If you, if you use any of the older methods where it keeps polling, is there a message? Is there a message? That requires a DNS lookup, then establishing connection and all that. That takes more, much more battery. This is an idle connection. It doesn't take as much battery. Exactly, so you don't use them more Apache. Plus, Apache uh, will never implement something that breaks HTTP 1.1. So they, there are no patches. They are not going to, uh, you cannot have a WebSocket server yeah, running on Apache. Yeah, yeah, the question. <laughs> His question is that uh, can you have um, if you have Apache running as a server for WebSockets, uh, you run out of resources because Apache is multi-processor, multi-threaded. Uh, is it multi-processor? Really? So Apache has multiple MPMs. It has the event data MPM also. Apache has this concept of MPM multi-process manager. Apache uh, has multi MPM for process, for thread, and for event. Does it support SVD? Not really. SPDY is a completely different thing. So SPDY, is, so so SPDY is so it's like HTTP was going one direction. Mm -hmm. SPDY is another one fork and WebSocket is another fork. Okay. So WebSocket is about communication. SPDY is a persistent channel where you can serve resources over it. So what mean? Not really, because that con that connection is open only for certain. Would they be using WebSockets also in like a for the SSL connection initially? Probably the later handshakes. Not be. no no. It, there, I mean, there are no plans right now like that. What what is the question? In which data can be so his question is uh, what are the ways in which you can like, send and receive authenticated data? So you can uh, associate your session ID with the client ID on the server side. So every time a client connects to the server, the server gets uh, in the handle of the bidirectional channel and ID to it. Okay, And you can associate, the client can also send a session ID which we have in the cookie and then you can verify that session ID and then probably create a map. This session ID is this user ID. How tamperable is that? Pardon? How tamperable is that? I mean, as much as your cookies are. Use HTTPS if you don't want it to be tampered. 
So his question is if you are using WebSockets, will you get uh, headers and cookies? As I said, WebSockets is a persistent connection, headers are not sent again and again. The headers are only sent initially. If you pass the headers, you pass the cookies and you save them, of course you can reuse it, you can associate it with the, the handle I told you about which has the, the client ID and the bidirectional channels available, you can store cookies there. But on every message, cookies are not sent. The, the sync sockets, so similar, yeah. similar to sync sockets? What are sync sockets? I mean, they're, they're like non-blocking, you know, you can... Yeah, so the entire, and the entire code here is non-blocking. Socket.io itself implements everything in non-blocking. Uh, the client side web sockets is non-blocking. Is there blocking sockets? No. WebSockets is completely asynchronous. There is no synchronous WebSockets API. Browser doesn't implement, except for XHR doesn't implement any network API which is synchronous. Isn't that because JavaScript itself is single threaded? Yeah. It would freeze your browser. It would freeze your browser. So if you can fire a synchronous uh, XHR request, but that will freeze your browser. So it's not a recommended way. Another use case for WebSockets is, um, uh, let's say you have a uh, you have a system, let's say you use a Facebook user and you say, I need all my data back. As Facebook said, it will take two hours to generate the data. And then you go refresh, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Google, they don't notify you back, right? You don't want to send that 200 MB of 1 GB of data over WebSockets. They can send a notification saying data is available, download now. So your browser can keep listening to a WebSocket stream and on certain message, you can download much larger data. WebSockets is just for sending smaller messages. Everything that you send on it has to be serialized. You cannot send binary data. You shouldn't send binary data on it. You can send blobs. Wait, why, why, why shouldn't you send binary data or encoded data? So you can. You can send blobs. The API lets you do that. Okay, but then you get a nice little streaming upload. But let's say you have 200 MB of binary data. You're blocking the entire server. What is the blocking? Very much like streaming, for example, I'm using the HTTP connection which we have and the, uh, the video which we are streaming. So basically, uh, uh, which, which I had obtained, uh, the previous video, uh, I don't have that any header, any size, what is coming from. So that's why it's, it's like streaming. So the same way we are doing here. So if you are talking about the downloading of big file, we can do this. And the biggest problem is when you're running a WebSocket server, it's an application server. You don't want your application server serving static content. Put it on a damn CD and use it. Question, Aditya. So, um, if I want to say use a WebSocket based API for notifications, okay, how do I know that the user is currently has an open socket? Suppose I want to say fallback. If the user is currently not sitting in the browser, send them an email. Otherwise, just show it on the browser. Yeah, so uh, the moment a user disconnects, the moment user disconnects, you lose the socket instance. Okay, so then you have to go save it somewhere saying that the socket is You have to keep a map somewhere that this user has the socket ID right now. Okay. If there is no socket ID, that means the user is gone, you can probably send him an email about it. Right. How many of you are going to use WebSockets? Yeah. Please do something about it. Use it, please. It's really cool. Any other questions? What are some node.js servers for Java? No, 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 Socket.io. So Socket.io has uh, server-side implementations. It uses uh, the NIO libraries and all. So you have async servers in Java also. It works quite well. What, wasn't there something about uh, Socket.io and Apache? Yeah, so the question was, if you use a uh, WebSocket server, not Socket.io, if you use a WebSocket server uh, with Apache, uh, won't it get, get out of resources? It will, because you don't use even the MPM with Apache mostly. But does Apache support WebSockets? No, it doesn't. So what's the workaround? There is no workaround if you're using Apache. You just you can use a patched version of Nginx or you use... Uh, so push it up uses Node.js um, uh, proxy. So suppose you have a, a VPS with a single IP address and you use Apache with everything else. How do you get sockets working now? You put, put Apache on another port and you put a WebSocket compliant server in front. A load balancer. Can't you put WebSockets on a separate port from 80? You can. And you can just use that to connect. But then again, certain large block are ports other than 80. <laughs> yep. How did you implement the authentication for the slide changing? So uh, I put a check saying that if I'm the admin, uh, and that admin thing is enabled when I enter the Konami code. How many of you are old SNES players, no Konami code? 
up, up, down, down, left, nee, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. You do it on Facebook, you see a lot of circles around. They still have it, I think. Okay. I'll probably push the code for the slides on GitHub so you can have a look if you want. You don't have the land here, the land doesn't work. Yeah, won't uh, web sockets be uh, same content as cross origin? No. If you're using the fallback, yes. Web sockets itself, no. No, I mean, can you, I don't think you can use a different domain or a different port for You can. Web you can use different port, you can use different host. You cannot use a WSS from HTTP. Okay. Web sockets can. Even flash based can if you maintain a, that cross origin XML file, but fallbacks no. So can you repeat that again? Question? This question is: uh, <coughs> web so Does WebSockets let you do cross origin requests? WebSockets protocol itself lets you. The fallbacks don't. So um, what's this, what's stopping it from being a security breach then? I mean, how do you build security if cross domain requests are allowed in WebSockets? So one of so again, uh, you have to implement some kind of a authentication system on your servers. The server, you can have something like a private public key thing. You can share a private public key with the user who wants to use that and they'll send a public key and then you verify it or not. WebSocket protocol itself is extremely minimal and it doesn't say anything about authentication, authorization or not. So it's not like JavaScript then because usually when you use JSON to get data, you don't have to authenticate from your own server because you know that only that it's, it's kind of like JSON P. JSON P. You don't have to authenticate authorize, right? Right. I mean, if you want to, you can have HTTP authentication on it, but you don't have to. Any more questions? That's it. Uh, oh, did I did I mention my name is Aditya and my handle is Netroy on Twitter and GitHub. Uh, Thank IT, you. Aditya also built the JSP website. So oh, I built the JSP website. Thank you guys.